Plants are the primary source that convert solar energy into chemical energy and provide the first link in the food chain. Human beings have used plants in innumerable ways for their food, nutrition, health, clothes, shelter and other needs. There is an amazing diversity and forms of plants used by us. For instance, we use rice in our day-to-day -day life and relish its various preparations like biryani, dosa, plain rice, poha, idli and several others. We all know that these items are made from one crop, that is rice. But do you know that there are nearly 40,000 named land races of rice only in India, which differ in texture, size, shape, color, aroma and most importantly in taste. Where does this diversity come from? Diversity over the years has been nurtured, utilized and enhanced by mankind for different purposes. The diversity of plants which are of direct or indirect importance to humans is what is known as plant genetic resources and is as important as other natural resources like air, water, soil and minerals. The geographical distribution of plant genetic resources is not even. The tropical equatorial regions are more rich and diverse as compared to the temperate cold regions. Plant genetic resources are also affected or lost by calamities such as drought, floods, cyclones and changes in land use patterns. Ever since the inception of agriculture 10,000 years ago, humans have selected plants from the wild and domesticated these through the process of cultivation. Domestication of plants received greater impetus during the last 100 years with the developments in the science of plant breeding. This resulted in high yielding varieties and hybrids which revolutionized agriculture. The introduction and adoption of these genetic materials is one of the major reasons for the replacement or loss of the traditional varieties, land races and primitive cultivars that were once the storehouse of valuable traits like disease resistance, drought resistance, salinity tolerance and so on. Nikolai Ivanovich Vavilov, a Russian geneticist and plant explorer, gave the concept of centers of origin and diversity of cultivated plants, wherein different crops evolved in different parts of the world. Indian Gene Center is the center of origin for crops like rice, pigeon pea, chickpea, sugarcane, citrus, moth bean, cotton, jute, cucurbits, jackfruit, brinjal, mango, black pepper, cardamom etc. and center of diversity for sorghum, pearl millet, finger millet, amaranth, pumpkin and chilies. Plant genetic resources are therefore important raw materials for basic human needs. In a classic paper entitled Search for New Genes, the eminent agriculture scientist, late Dr. B. P. Pal, working at the then Imperial Agriculture Research Institute, now Indian Agricultural Research Institute IARI, emphasized on the importance of collecting and utilizing plant genetic resources and approached the Indian Council of Agricultural Research ICAR to set up a unit for assembly of global germplasm collection under pest-free conditions. The ICAR scheme for plant introduction commenced functioning and became a division of IARI under the dynamic leadership of late Sri Harbhajan Singh in 1961. On recommendations by many leading luminaries like late Dr. B.P. Pal, Dr. M.S. Swaminathan and others, the division was developed into an independent institute in August 1976 and named as the National Bureau of Plant Introduction and rechristened in 1977 as the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources NBPGR. Today, NBPGR is the nodal organization responsible for the management of plant genetic resources and works under the Crop Science Division of the ICAR.
The main activities carried out by NBPGR are Germplasm Collection Germplasm Exchange Plant Quarantine Germplasm Characterization and Evaluation Germplasm Conservation Documentation and Human Resource Development The multifarious activities of NBPGR are carried out from its headquarters in the Pusa campus at New Delhi and from its 10 regional stations in different agro-climatic zones of the country along with experimental farm at Isapur. For the Western Himalayan region, Shimla. For Central Himalayan region, Bhuvali. For Northwestern Himalayas, Srinagar. And for Northeastern region, Shillong stations were established. To cater to the Western Ghats, the Thrissur. And for Deccan Plateau and Eastern Ghats, Hyderabad and Katak stations were established. Ranchi station was developed for Gondwana region. Akola for Marathwada and Jodhpur to cater to Northwestern Arid Zone. In 1982, an All India Coordinated Research Project on underutilized and underexploited plants was initiated at NBPGR New Delhi to carry out systematic research on lesser known crops of future promise. Realizing the need to characterize the elite germplasm and to protect the plant genetic resources, a national research center on DNA fingerprinting was established at NBPGR in 1996 with the objectives of DNA fingerprinting of released and notified crop varieties, parental lines of hybrids and genetic stocks of potential value. NBPGR has a unique facility, the National Gene Bank which is among the largest facilities in the world. This comprises the Seed Gene Bank, In Vitro Gene Bank and Cryo Gene Bank. Another important responsibility assigned to NBPGR is to carry out quarantine of all the germplasm, including transgenics and trial material, imported into India for research purposes as a legal requirement under the Plant Quarantine Order 2003 under the Destructive Insects and Pests Act of 1914. NBPGR carries out various activities involved in PGR management in partnership with other crop-based ICER institutes and state agricultural universities. Plant genetic resources is collected from different sources through exploration. During explorations, team of researchers visit different parts of the country and collect plant genetic resources for its variability. Germplasm is collected in the form of mature healthy seeds, vegetative propagules, cuttings and budwoods from farmers fields, farmers store, threshing yards, local markets and natural habitats. Important data like the name of plant, locality, habitat, date of collection and other information is recorded along with the ethnobotanical information. Global positioning system devices are used for accurate noting of the altitude, latitude and longitude. All this information constitutes the passport data. Another important step during the collection of germplasm is to collect a representative sample of the plant with its economic part for making a herbarium voucher specimen. The herbarium voucher is important for assigning or validating the correct taxonomic identity of the germplasm. The herbarium facility at NBPGR is designated as the National Herbarium of Cultivated Plants. It's a specialized herbarium of cultivated plant species, its wild relatives and land races, which makes it unique from other herbaria. It has over 250 species representing about 20,000 specimens used for identification, authentication and teaching purposes. Another means of adding new germplasm is through introduction of PGR from exotic sources. Germplasm exchange is the introduction and export of diverse germplasm between countries. Since its inception, NBPGR has been instrumental in introducing several important crops like soya bean, French bean, sunflower, kiwi fruit, peach, apple, apricot, blueberry and many others. NBPGR has linkages with more than 100 countries for exchange of germplasm. 
the introduced germplasm of different plant species are acclimatized to the new phytogeographical conditions and established successfully. These introductions have played an important role in diversification of Indian agriculture. All the consignments imported into India require an import permit issued by the director NBPGR and a phytosanitary certificate issued by the plant quarantine agency of the exporting country. Every year, over 20,000 accessions of germplasm and 50,000 samples of trial material are received for utilization in the ongoing crop improvement programs. Earlier, plant germplasm, including improved varieties, was freely exchanged. But with the enforcement of Convention on Biological Diversity in December 1993, the transboundary movement of germplasm is now regulated. The export cases are considered as per the provisions of the Biological Diversity Act of India 2002. NBPGR is also actively involved in facilitating supply of germplasm to all institutes in India for research purposes. The supply of material is always done under a material transfer agreement. Introduction of planting material including transgenics from other countries carries the risk of entry of the associated insect pests, diseases and weeds. NBPDR has been given the responsibility on behalf of the Government of India to carry out quarantine checks on the germplasm meant for research purposes. NBPDR also undertakes quarantine processing of germplasm meant for export and issues the phytosanitary certificate. About 70,000 samples are imported every year and all are subjected to quarantine processing. As soon as the samples are received, the details of consignment are verified, documenting and the consignment is opened by a team of specialists for joint inspection to look for the presence of soil, deformed seeds which may harbor pests and pathogens. Based on the health status, the seeds are subjected to specialized tests for detection of different kinds of pests. Hidden infestation of insects is monitored through X-ray radiography. Taxonomic identity of pests is confirmed by identification keys. Fungal and bacterial detection is generally carried out by washing test, incubation test and seedling symptom test. Nematodes are extracted from soil clods and few of the planting material species. Detection of viruses is done by subjecting the seeds to growing on test in post-entry quarantine greenhouses and nurseries. The seedlings are further tested by a combination of techniques such as enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, reverse transcription, polymerase chain reaction and electron microscopy. To salvage the infested or infected material, physicochemical techniques are used such as hot water treatment, pesticidal dips, fumigation, etc. Stringent plant quarantine carried out by NBPGR over the last several years has been instrumental in preventing the introduction and spread of several economically important insect pests and diseases that would have caused havoc to Indian agriculture. To understand the worth of the material that has been collected or introduced, germplasm evaluation and characterization is carried out. The utilization of PGR in crop improvement programs rests on identification of promising accessions through evaluation. It involves recording of highly heritable morphological characters which describe the accession and helps in its identification. The detailed evaluation involves field trials of accessions over the years at different locations and recording of various characters. These include agromorphological traits and biotic and abiotic stress tolerance. The morphological data in certain cases is supplemented with biochemical analysis like protein, amino acid profiles, alkaloids, oil content, fatty acid and essential oils using sophisticated analytical instruments like high-pressure liquid chromatography, gas liquid chromatography, near-infrared spectrophotometer, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscope, Geltec Auto Analyzer, High Pressure Thin Layer Chromatography. Approximately 10,000 accessions are evaluated and characterized per year for different agromorphological and biochemical traits at different locations in a network mode. 
For sensitive and robust characterization, molecular techniques that directly utilize DNA are also used. DNA, which is the basic unit of heredity, is unique to individuals, cultivars and species. DNA fingerprinting comprises various steps such as extraction of DNA, generation of multiple fragments and separating them using gel electrophoresis. The specific patterns obtained on the electrophoresis are then utilized for interpreting the relatedness of diversity of the samples tested. Novel SSR marker sets have been developed in citrus, chilies, mango, brinjal, moong bean, banana, sesame, pigeon pea, watermelon and finger millet. More than 2000 varieties belonging to 34 crops have been fingerprinted. Once the germplasm has been evaluated and characterized, seeds and propagules are multiplied for its conservation. The Indian National Gene Bank was established at NBPGR to conserve germplasm in form of seeds, vegetative propagules, in vitro cultures, embryos and pollen. The Gene Bank is supported by the active partnership of other institutions and centers designated as the National Active Germplasm Sites. The Seed Gene Bank consists of compartmentalized cold storage modules in which seeds are kept in controlled conditions of temperature and humidity. Seed materials on receipt are inspected and cleaned. They are then subjected to germination test following international standards. Seeds that show at least 85% germination and good vigor are the only ones that are accepted for conservation. The qualifying accessions are dried to low moisture contents under controlled environment. The dried seed samples are labeled, packed and vacuum sealed in tri-layered aluminium foil pouches. They are then placed at a defined location in the gene bank. There are 12 long-term storage modules maintaining a temperature from minus 18 degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius at NBPGR headquarters and medium-term storage modules maintaining 0 to 10 degrees Celsius at headquarters and regional stations. Nearly 0.4 million orthodox seed samples including wild relatives of important crop groups such as cereals, millets, legumes, vegetables, fibers, forages, medicinal and aromatic plants are conserved in the seed gene bank. A number of economically important plant species such as banana, sweet potato, taro, garlic do not form seeds or are propagated vegetatively. In addition, some species such as mango, jackfruit, lychee produce recalcitrant seeds which are not amenable to seed conservation as their seeds cannot be stored at low temperature and low moisture. These plant species are either maintained traditionally in field gene banks or through use of in vitro and cryopreservation techniques. In vitro conservation that is growing the plants in glass under defined nutrient conditions in an artificial environment. Tissue culture medium is prepared as per the requirement of the crop and sterilized using autoclave. Suitable explants like shoot tips, nodal cuttings or shoot buds are used for culture initiation and multiplication in a sterile environment using a laminar airflow. Cultures are stored normally at 25 degrees Celsius under artificial light conditions. Presently, cultures of germplasm of more than 2000 accessions of tropical and temperate fruits, tuberous and bulbous crops, spices, and some threatened medicinal and aromatic plants are conserved in the in vitro gene bank at NBPGR headquarters and Thrissur. In vitro conservation offers short to medium term conservation. For long term conservation, cryopreservation is the only method available. Cryopreservation is the storage of viable biological propagules at ultra low temperatures using liquid nitrogen that has a boiling temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. At NBPGR, plant germplasm in the form of seeds, embryos, embryonic axes, dormant buds, meristems and pollen are cryopreserved. The explants are suitably desiccated by air dehydration or by use of certain chemicals called as cryoprotectants before they are placed in polypropylene cryovials. The cryovials are plunged in liquid nitrogen where it remains frozen till its use. The germplasm is stored in the vapor 
or liquid phase of nitrogen. NBPGR has six state-of-the-art cryo tanks of 900 liter capacity. The uninterrupted supply of liquid nitrogen is ensured by using a large liquid nitrogen station where filling and monitoring systems are automated. More than 9,000 accessions of important plant species have been cryo stored in the NBPGR cryo bank. All germplasm that is collected, evaluated and conserved is systematically documented. The most important step is assigning a unique identity number to each accession. IC number for indigenous collections and EC number for exotic collection. NBPGR has developed online databases for easy access and retrieval of passport data and information on germplasm exchange, quarantine and conservation of PGR. Detailed information on germplasm characterization and evaluation are available in the form of crop catalogues and all plant germplasm, exotic and indigenous, are available in plant germplasm reporters and crop inventories. To promote utilization of germplasm, seeds are routinely multiplied and distributed to various users for research and crop improvement purposes. Field days, diversity.